Welcome to Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner. I'm Mike Howard. Representative, thanks for coming into the studio to talk about general assistance medical care, something that's been uh, getting a lot of attention and mm -hmm. something you folks have been working on very hard for several months. Yeah, uh, yesterday was uh, was the first week of March and we voted on uh, Tuesday to uh, try and override the governor's veto of our fix for general assistance medical care, uh, which is a program that serves at any given time about 30,000 uh, low-income Minnesotans uh, who have assets of less than seven $800 a year. Uh, we uh, did not uh, succeed in the override attempt. Uh, it was a party line vote after we had uh, passed it originally off the House floor. Uh, I want to say Blues. 125 to 9 yeah. or something, something like that. So we had strong bipartisan support for that fix. Um, what constituents have asked me uh, are things like, what is general assistance medical care? How is that different from the other health care programs we have? The governor's proposed rolling in those 30,000 people into um, Minnesota Care, which is another program. Uh, we also have quite a few veterans who are in general assistance medical care, so people asked about you know, VA benefits and so on. And it seems like all of that is trying to come up with an answer with how, how do you provide care to this set of people and do it at the most co in the most cost-effective yeah, way. Yeah, uh, you know, the advantage to our uh, proposal compared to the governor's was that it actually costs less and covers more people, uh, which actually would have been a better fiscal deal, so we're, we're a little perplexed by the veto. but. Um, uh, there are three types of state health care programs and they don't include Medicare, which is all federal, but Medicaid uh, covers about 600,000 Minnesotans, which is more than 10% of the population. Most of them are uh, disabled. Uh, people who are in nursing homes uh, are technically disabled, so they're covered by that. Um, and uh, uh, it includes a lot of people in our area in uh, Shoreview, North Oaks, Lino Lakes, and so on, who have uh, developmental disabilities, who are living in home or in a group home. Uh, that's paid half for by the federal, or paid half by the federal government, half by the state. Uh, it takes a long time to actually qualify and f get all the paperwork and the red tape through for someone on Medicaid. And if you show up at an emergency room without coverage, you can't cover the cost then. You have to sign people up later, but it doesn't pay for the retroactive cost. Uh, Minnesota Care is actually for uh, people with jobs. Right. There's about 120,000 people on that. And that was set up under the Carlson administration uh, with the help of the legislature. And uh, when you go to the doctor, there's a 2% provider tax, and that is, uh, goes into the health care access fund and pays for subsidizing that. And you pay a premium and you pay a copay. Uh, general assistance medical care doesn't have a copay or a premium. You just are treated, and then uh, the state you know, has eaten that cost. Uh, the reason you can't put them all in Minnesota care is because 30% uh, of the people on general assistance medical care are uh, homeless. They have no fixed address. Right. So you can't get them the enrollment materials. And some of them have an income of two or $300 a month. Uh, so a copay for their medical services is uh, even the small amount is a considerable sum. And just the uh, transaction cost to deal with that is actually greater than the cost itself. So general assistance medical care has been a way for hospitals to avoid absorbing all that uncompensated care when someone comes into the emergency room to help get them some preventive care. So our fix not only cut the program in half pretty much in terms of dollars, but it asked uh, hospitals to take a little bit of a hit, counties to take a little hit, providers and so on um, to serve that population uh, so that all of our safety net hospitals like Regents Hospital can still accept people uh, who do have coverage. And so what seems key it's, it's about keeping those hospitals whole. Right, and with the governor's auto enrollment plan, uh, there is a, that gap of people that will be uninsured does increase that uncompensated care, and uh, that's a, a right. hidden yeah. tax so, that we all yeah, pay. Yeah, the governor has uh, put people on GAMC in Minnesota Care, and then 20,000 people in Minnesota Care would be kicked off. So on the whole, we don't actually net any savings from the efficiency. So uh, we're going to keep working at it. Uh, Representative Aaron Murphy has done a great job here on the House side to try and negotiate with the governor and uh, we've tabled the override motion. We took a vote but then tabled it so we may come back to it very soon. All right well thanks for coming into the studio to talk about uh, what can be a complex issue but it sounds like the solution you put together uh, passed with the bipartisan majority the first time. Hopefully there's still some room to get something done. Uh, that's my hope and so I hope we'll have some good news next time. This has been Capital Review with State Representative Paul Gardner. Thank you.